Hello, Denmark. Annalise Baird here for DIS News. I'm jo joined by Brooke Hesney and Jacob Zachs. Today is the 10th of February here in beautiful Odense. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. We'll be discussing the latest development in the U.S. banking crisis, upcoming films in 2012, and Denmark's refusal to adopt the euro. But first, Brooke, what do we have in the world of sports? The upcoming 2012 UEFA Euro Cup. And Jacob, how about weather? It's cold. Stay with us for more to come on weather and sports, but now we've got the latest in the debate on Barack Obama's new contraception policy. The policy requires Catholic hospitals and universities to provide birth control in their employee health benefits, and it is causing quite a ruckus. Members of the Republican Party have vocally rejected the decision. President Obama has been accused of alienating Catholic voters, and Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney called the policy an assault on religion. The Catholic Church has also voiced their opinion on the matter. Archbishop Timothy Dolan of New York, who is also the president of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, stated that this should not happen in a land where freedom of religion comes first in the Constitution. The debate at large questions whether or not religious beliefs should play a role in health care. However, it seems that Obama's policy has sparked less of a debate and more of a backlash among conservatives, politicians, and clergy alike. For the time being, this is an issue to watch and stay with us in the upcoming weeks for more news from DIS. And now, Brooke with our sports update. Hi, I'm Brooke Hesney with today's sports story covering the upcoming 2012 UEFA Euro Cup hosted in eight stadiums across Ukraine and Poland from June 8th to July 1st. Tickets are going fast and are available until February 29th. They can be purchased for as little as 30 euros. From the ticket sales, 32% of the profit will be directly allocated to each of the 16 participating nations. A highly sought prize for the winner of this tournament will be an automatic entry to the 2013 FIFA Confederation Cup. The last Euro Cup back in 2008 was hosted in both Austria and Switzerland and was won by Spain in a marginal 1-0 victory over Germany. Denmark last tasted victory in the Euro Cup 20 years ago in 1992, where they received a spot in the semifinals due to Yugoslavia's disqualification in their bracket. They went on to win the tournament by defeating Germany 2-0. He had another championship taken from Germany. This summer, Denmark will face a tough bracket against the Netherlands, Germany, and Portugal. Good luck. Experts say some teams to watch for this year's Euro Cup are England, Croatia, and France all under new management and looking for redemption. And of course, we'll all be watching Denmark. That concludes today's sports story. Back to you, Annalise. Thanks, Brooke. Sounds exciting. In other news, the U.S. banking crisis continues as five U.S. banks reached a $25 billion settlement with the federal government over fraudulent foreclosure practices Thursday. While officials admitted that the settlement will only directly benefit a small portion of homeowners, they claimed it was an important milestone to help heal the market. The settlement is the largest reached by any industry since the $206 billion 1998 Tobacco Master Settlement Agreement. Federal officials went on to say that the banking settlement is not intended to be punitive and that the punishment for the bank's roles in the current economic crisis is still forthcoming. The settlement was prompted by the discovery that the banks in question were using falsified or poorly written paperwork to quickly foreclose on struggling homeowners. The practice is known as robo-signing. The five banks involved in the settlement are Wells Fargo, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Alley Financial, and Citigroup. Meanwhile, the Securities and Exchange Commission is separately aiming to determine whether banks fully disclosed risks to investors who bought packages of loans that financed the housing boom. We've got the wonderful Lulu David out on the streets interviewing local Danes about the euro. Lulu? Uh, thank you, Annalise. We are here in Odense gathering opinions on the Danish connection to the euro. So my first question is, uh, do you think Denmark should switch to the euro as its main form of currency? For, for myself, no. Uh, I think we're doing pretty well on the Danish currency. And uh, you can see the, the other countries in, in crisis. So I, I would think we should stick with the Danish as for now, yeah. Uh, what do you think of the recent austerity plan set forth by the Greek leaders yesterday? Or have you heard anything about it? Yeah, I heard something about it in the new radio news today, but I don't know so much about what the plan is. But so you're not quite sure exactly how the Danish are connected to it, if they are at all? 
uh, yeah, I think there was something about we supported the Greeks with, I don't know, it, with money or what it's just uh, things to help them. But and now it's about Spain. I think it's going to help. We have to go and help Spain also. But it, I don't know the correct details. Denmark should switch to the euro as its main currency. No, actually, I think Denmark should uh, maintain the Danish kroner. And why do you think this? Because, uh, I don't know, it's some kind of a pride for the Danish people, I guess. Do you think Denmark should switch from the kroner to the euro? No, I don't think so. Why not? Because the kroner is much better, and it makes the country unique from for have the same all our has. Do you think if they ended up switching to the euro, there would be a big uproar? I hope so. Uh, I really think we should keep the crown. Really think. I don't want euro. That's it from the streets of Odense and heading back up to you, Annalise. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lulu. Now we'll go to Jacob for our weather report. Please tell us it's getting warmer, Jacob. Unsurprisingly, it has been a cold winter in Denmark and does not seem to be letting up soon. Today in Odensa, we are going to hit a high of only 28 degrees Fahrenheit with a low of 16 degrees. But fortunately for us living here in the kingdom of Odin, it will, it will be sunnier, it will be getting longer, sunnier for longer during the day with the, sunrise, the sun rising earlier and setting later. Um, also, the winds will be heading east-northeast as we see here. Um, unfortunately, I apologize for our American viewers who have to see that, our, that, that we will be having snow, but our, also our, um, our, our weather is done in centigrade. Um, it, is, uh, it is quite hard to find JPEGs that are in Fahrenheit in Europe. Um, over the next five days, the temperature will be getting warmer and warmer, but however, as you can see, snow will be coming and also rain will be happening as well. Um, but the, the winds will be increasing and going in all directions extremely fast, so it will not be, it will not be getting, it will, it will feel cold, but at the same time, it will, at the same time, it will be getting warmer temperature-wise. So hopefully when the rain does end, we, we, will, we will feel that warmth start to, start to rise. Um, now I'd like to go to Paula for, um, sorry. So, and we get, so we're getting warmer and warmer with longer days to look forward in Denmark. Um, back to you, Annalise. Thanks so much for that forecast, Jacob. Copenhagen Fashion Week took place last week from February 1st through the 5th. Known as the biggest fashion festival in Northern Europe, an estimated 50,000 fashion professionals came to the capital to display their designs. While festivals over the past few years saw lower turnouts as a result of the ongoing recession, this year was considered a success. The festival is widely known for showcasing many innovative designs and unique stylistic aesthetics. These reasons help to draw over 60,000 visitors, designers, and press to the event. This year, the Fashion Festival combined with other events, including Copenhagen Cooking, Copenhagen Jazz Festival, and the Copenhagen Art Festival to make up the new Wondercool Festival. The combined festivals strive to warm up the cold winter months with a wealth of unique events and attractions. 41 shows and four exhibitions took place over the five-day festival. 2,750 brands were represented, including Hugo Boss, David Anderson, Gaia, and many others. This year also saw many new and young labels making their Fashion Week debuts. We now turn to Paula for an interview with film critic Dr. Emily Thompson. Paula, take it away. Thank you, Annalise. With me is a big cheese of the film industry, Dr. Emily Thompson, known as the film doctor with a specialized doctor degree in movie criticism. Thanks for being with us today. That's film criticism. And thank you for having me on today. What can we expect from 2012 films genre-wise? Well, it seems like there's a lot of blockbuster films coming out in 2012. For, so for those holding out for the uh, independent films, you'll have to wait until later in the year to find out more. Are there any we should keep an eye out for in particular? Well, have you heard of a series called The Hunger Games? No. Tell me more. Well, the original series takes Hi. place in a bleak North America the in the future where children have to participate to in the match to the on death. To eat. Get ready for the first movie to come out culture, on March 23rd. This highly anticipated film adaption of the series is one of the highlights of 2012 film. The movie, I mean film, is directed by Gary Ross and stars Jennifer Lawrence as the fearless Katniss Everdeen. Get your tickets now because it's sure to sell out before opening day. 
Sounds like the berries. Any other films to watch out for? Definitely The Hobbit, Tolkien's precursor to the epic Lord of the Rings trilogy. See what Frodo, Bilbo, and the rest of the gang is up to in Peter Jackson's latest installment. Gee, that sure sounds like the bee's knees. Sure is, Pamela. It sure is. Paula, can we expect any other notable film adaptations from novels? The famed Jack Kerouac book, On the Road, will get its debut on the silver screen later this year. The star-studded cast includes Kirsten Dunst and Kristen Stewart, some of our favorite Kristens in one movie. F- and for the ladies, hunky Tron Legacy star Garrett Hudlin will be gracing the screen with ultimate beat generation swagger. Other stars include Mad Men's Elizabeth Moss and the always popular Steve Buscemi. Neato. Any films that will be good, wholesome fun for the entire family? Of course. The Dark Knight Rises and Titanic in 3D should be delightful, age-appropriate affairs. That Batman sure got himself into a pickle last time in The Dark Knight. Indeed. And who doesn't love tortured superheroes and sinking ships? I'll say. What's number one on your films to see this year? Definitely Wes Anderson's newest movie, Moonrise Kingdom. This cutesy film from indie darling Wes Anderson involves the 1960s camping, father-son conflicts, Bill Murray, and a whole lot of muted pastel covers. Sounds positively swell, Emily. Of course, Patrice. Okay, that's about all the time we have today. Thanks again for joining us, Emily. It's been the cat's meow. Uh, I'll have to be sure to check out some of those. Um, and now for our final story, we'll head out to the streets with Mae Vaplin, Adam Pagel, and Joanna Wendell. Hi. We hit the streets with our crackpot news team to see what do Danes like to eat? If there's one thing that's universal in every culture, it's food. Why don't you come take a walk with us and find out what young Danes have to say. So um, since you've been here in Denmark, what types of food have you enjoyed eating? Here in Denmark, uh, I enjoy eating uh, flank steak. Flank steak, yeah. mosque, uh, in English, I guess. It's really good. I don't think uh, they had it uh, as much in Sweden. Mm-hmm. Have you been to any restaurants around here that are cheap but good? Uh, the only one I know that it's cheap and good is mosque, uh, uh, Jensen's Burfus. Uh, it's okay, so, uh, I think. What is your favorite home-cooked meal from when you were younger? Uh, it's my mother's uh, homemade pizza. It's fantastic. <laughs> and if there was one meal you could have for your birthday, and it didn't matter how much it cost or what it was, what's your favorite thing in the whole wide world? Maybe uh, it would be uh, a really fine-made sushi, uh, maybe. And any fun bars around here that you enjoy? Yeah, Heidi's. The, it's a nice place. It's cheap beer and uh, nice people. Thank you so much. What is your favorite traditional Danish meal? It's called frikadella. I love frikadella. Yeah, they're very good, mm-hmm. very Danish. Um, and what do you think is like a main difference between Danish and American cuisine? Um, we don't fry as much. <laughs> That's the only thing. I, I've actually been to America and I also found out that vegetables were so expensive compared to the food with a lot of fat in it. So yeah. I also think the price has something to do with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, what is your favorite food to eat out? Uh, pizza. <laughs> pizza. Is, do you think there's a difference between American and, and Danish pizza? Americans are better. Oh, yeah, Americans are better pizza. All right, well, score one for us. (laughs) Well, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. And enjoy your day. Thanks, guys. Unfortunately, we've come to a close. It's tough to say goodbye, Denmark, but we'll see you next time on DIS News. I'm Annalise Baird. I'm Brooke Hesney. And I'm Jacob Zachs. And this has been DIS News. Stay warm, Denmark. What's up?